85 million years ago, the shadow of a giant aerial creature moves over the throthing tops of a rough sea. The predator, although fierce looking, didn't have the powerful talons to just pluck a fish from the sea, and instead would have to rely on its beak. This is because it wasn't a bird, but a flying reptile, a pterosaur, and one of the most instantly recognisable prehistoric creatures in existence, the pteranodon. However, although famous and enormous, these creatures weren't monsters, and they actually led a humble existence that would have been similar to a modern day seabird. The first pteranodon fossil was found in Kansas in 1871 by the famous paleontologist Othniel Marsh. Why an animal that lived in a similar way to a seabird was found in what would become modern day Kansas may seem strange, but this is because during the Cretaceous period, North America was cut in two, or maybe even three, by an ancient inland sea named the Western Interior Seaway. The geography of the Earth during the time of the dinosaurs is often thought of as being totally different to today, or maybe even just made up of one continent. And while this was true at one point, by the late Cretaceous, around 90 million years ago and onwards, the continents were actually quite similar to today, at least in shape. However, global temperatures were much hotter, which meant that sea levels were much higher, which meant that mountains along the Pacific would have been more like fjords, and landlocked Kansas had a rustic coastline that would have stretched thousands of miles up into the most northern reaches of Canada, down to the Gulf of Mexico. The first specimen of Pteranodon was fragmentary, mainly just consisting of wing bones. Pteranodon was one of the first pterosaurs discovered, and was the first pterosaur discovered outside of Europe. And so at the time, people knew a lot less about these animals. When the pteranodon remains were found, it was very early in the history of paleontology as a discipline, and so it wasn't known how big and diverse this group of animals was yet. So despite pteranodon having many unique features, Marsh thought it was just another species of the European pterosaur called Pterodactylus, which was the first pterosaur discovered, or more accurately, the first pterosaur to be named and understood to be an ancient flying reptile. Pterodactylus meaning wing finger. Pterodactylus had many differences with Pteranodon, but one of the biggest was that it had a row of sharp teeth. After its discovery, it was also thought that Pteranodon had teeth, but these were later found to be teeth that belonged to a giant prehistoric fish named Zivactylus that lived at the same time. About five years later, a Pteranodon skull was discovered and it was realised it was a very different animal, and so its name was changed to Pteranodon. The confusion over the naming of Pteranodon, and also that Pterodactylus became very well known at the time, may be the reason that Pteranodons, or all pterosaurs, are sometimes named pterodactyls in popular culture. Pteranodons are now known from literally thousands of specimens, having more fossilised material than any other pterosaur. This means what they looked like and how they lived is fairly well understood. They were enormous, being more than twice as big as any living flying animal and they were thought to have been the largest flying animals to have ever existed, until the discovery of the Asdarkid pterosaurs in the 70s. Most of the different species of Pteranodon can be categorised into a smaller kind and a larger kind. The smaller kind have a very large pelvic canal, so it has been interpreted that these smaller pterosaurs were female. The smaller Pteranodons even had some different features like a smaller and rounder head crest, meaning that the male head crest were likely used for sexual display. Male pteranodons had an average wingspan of well over 5 metres, and a body larger than a fully grown man, being roughly at around eye level. However, some really big individuals had wings reaching up to 6.5 metres, and maybe have been even bigger, although that is based on partial remains. So pteranodons wingspan was twice that of a wandering albatross, and actually closer to a small aeroplane than any living bird. At the point when the first pteranodon fossils were discovered, the only pterosaurs that were known about had teeth, which is why the fish teeth were thought to belong to the pterosaur. However, pteranodon was a very different type of pterosaur named pterodactyloids. The first pterosaurs to evolve during the Triassic and Jurassic were named rampharynchoids, which had long tails, shortened fat wings, and sharp teeth. But during the Jurassic, the pterodactyloids would first appear. They had thinner and longer wings that allowed them to become much stronger flyers, being able to soar and glide far more effectively. And they convergently evolved in a similar way to birds, by losing their teeth, presumably to shed weight. Pteranodon were archetypal members of this group, 
being toothless and having perfect wings for traversing across their ocean. Pteranodon remains are nearly always found near to the ocean, and fossil evidence shows that their lives were heavily linked to the sea. One Pteranodon specimen has an entire fossilised fish in its stomach, and many others have a stomach contents of odd bones and scales, showing that fish made up the majority of their diet. However, how they actually caught this prey isn't as certain. Pterosaurs and birds are comparable in that they both fly, but actually the way they fly, the formation of their wings and the way they took off is completely different. Bird wings are formed from a forelimb with their legs being completely separate. But pterosaur wings were more similar to bat wings, in that they had a membrane that wrapped around both front and the back legs. And it is thought that this is how such large animals were able to get airborne, using something called the quad launch, where they would plant their forelimbs on the ground and catapult forward, pushing off with their hind limbs, which study has shown could have created more than twice as much force as the way a bird takes off, which is just jumping and flapping. But the problem that while fishing, it is difficult to imagine how they could have taken off from the water after, so they may have fished while flying. However, because their hind legs were part of the wing membrane, pteranodons and actually all pterosaurs didn't have really powerful talons like modern birds of prey do, and usually actually had quite weak claws, especially when comparing to their giant size. So it is unlikely that they fished using their claws like some birds of prey like bald eagles do. They may have fished while flying using their beak, flying close to the surface and skimming with their beak. However, some research has shown that their head and neck were as robust as some modern diving birds, so it is possible that they may have caught fish by plunge diving and completely submerging and swimming like a gannet, and then taking off from the water after. So pteranodons preyed on fish, but they may have also been prey for other animals. They were very large animals, but during the Cretaceous many animals were big, including predatory ones. Sharing an ecosystem with Pteranodon were sharks that grew larger than great whites, the giant aquatic lizards the Mosasaurs, and turtles the size of rhinos. One of the thousands of Pteranodon fossils has a shark tooth in its neck, and the tooth is firmly embedded in the vertebrae showing the incision must have been made by a bite. Although a shark scavenging a dead Pteranodon can't be ruled out, this could mean that the sharks may have sometimes preyed on Pteranodon. So Pteranodon were incredible animals, and although unusual animals by today's standards, they were not movie monsters. They primarily survived on small prey, may have been hunted by larger animals, and like seagulls or pelicans, they were incredibly common, their silhouettes dominating the skyline of many Cretaceous sunsets. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.